And we're 29 days away from Election Day. But if you wish, you can vote as early as today. 10 News anchor Steve Atkinson is live at the Registrar of Voters Office with all of the changes during this unusual election season. Steve? Kim, so many different changes, as you mentioned, because of the pandemic here in 2020. As you mentioned, you could vote as early as today if you wanted to here at the Registrar of Voters Office. They're open here for another hour, so you might want to hurry down. Or you do have 29 days, as you mentioned. Look out for these. These are mail-in ballots. They should be coming in the mail to you as of today. You have up until November the 3rd to do that as well. Or if you want to vote in person, you not only have one day, you now have four days to vote in person as well, beginning October the 31st. A lot of changes, as you mentioned. So the vote Registrar of Voters just wants to make sure that you know everything you need to know to make your vote count. That is the sound of election progress in a pandemic. We have two sorters and each of the respective sorters run 44,000 envelopes per hour. Long before we ever heard the phrase COVID, Michael Vu and his team were planning for an election that would be heavily dependent on mail-in ballots. We have a rich history of voting by mail. In fact, 78% of San Diego County registered voters already voted by mail prior to this November election. The other 22% will now be receiving their own mail ballots this week as required by state law. What's happening on the national scale is not happening here in, in San Diego. While San Diego County has always been ahead of the election curve, all of this is in response to a safe and valid election during the pandemic. It's what VU calls unprecedented. Something like what we're doing, you don't do in a four to six month period. You generally do it in a four to six year period. And yet we adapt quickly. For those who still want to vote in person, instead of 1,600 smaller local precincts, there will now be 235 super polling locations, each with socially distanced and other health protocols. And instead of one day of voting, you now have four days. You don't just have a 13 hour window on election day on November 3rd. You now have until October th uh, on October 31st when we open these locations all the way through the close of the polls on November 3rd at 8 p.m. to go out and vote. Still, Vu's campaign is vote safe and he's encouraging voters to use the mail ballot option despite the unfounded claims from the president. This is going to be a fraud. Vu wants to assure all San Diegans your vote will count. We have built the infrastructure. We have built the processes and protocols to ensure the security of every single ballot and that there is utmost integrity in that process. All right. Now, if you're one of those people like me and likes the best of both worlds, you can actually drop off your mail in ballot in person as well. The county is going to provide 126 mail drop off locations where you can just bring your ballot. There's going to be a county monitor there as well to make sure that you have signed and sealed your ballot as well. Completely safe. Uh, this is all about voting safe here in 2020. They want to make sure that you're healthy during this pandemic and that you do it the right way and that it's verified. We're going to be talking more about that coming up at 430 Kim. We're going to be talking about the mail in process and how safe your vote will be. We'll see you then. All right, we look forward to that. Thank you, Steve. The debate over repealing the state's ban on affirmative action. We're exploring both sides of Proposition 16 before voters vote. The Supreme Court is kicking off a new term today. Justices have a list of cases to consider, including another challenge to the Affordable Care Act. Opponents argue that tax cuts from 2017 made a provision unconstitutional and Obamacare should be struck down. The court will also look at voting rules in Arizona. Republicans there want to reinstate voting restrictions that were previously struck down for being racially biased. President Trump's pick, Amy Coney Barrett, is prohibited from voting on cases before she's confirmed. Senate Republicans are trying to quickly confirm Barrett. In an email obtained by CNN, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell told his Republican colleagues that he needs all of them back on October 19th to ensure that the minimum number of members will be there. But COVID still poses a risk. Think about the health risks involved here. I mean, it's really, I mean, Dianne Feinstein, the, the ranking Democrat, is 87 years old. You know, Chuck Grassley, who was on the Judiciary Committee, is also in his mid-80s. Democrats are calling on McConnell to just put, all pro put the process on hold. Mixed messages continue on masks. Mississippi became the first state to lift a statewide mask mandate. Cities and towns can still put their own rules in place. Now, the governor said the facts and data do show that masks work. Mississippi is requiring them at certain events, including the state fair that starts this week. 
I suspect that Mississippi will see an increase in cases if people uh, stop wearing face coverings. Infectious disease experts remind people just because an order may be lifted doesn't mean they should stop wearing masks. We'd have to have an effective vaccine that prevented people from getting infected as well as prevented them from getting severe disease. That we had adequate testing capacity so that people could know their status and they wouldn't go out into public if they were positive. I think short of that, masks are going to be one tool that we have to continue to use. And many people are going to get accustomed to masks and they're going to realize that masks also likely have some impact on other respiratory viruses. So we may see mask wearing become much more common in the United States, similar to what it is in some Asian countries because of uh, the value that people are, are gaining from them. New research on homemade cloth masks found they expel invisible cotton fibers into the air. Now, it's unknown if those fibers can carry infectious viral particles, which drives home the point of washing any cloth facial coverings. Make sure you do that regularly. And face coverings are still required in San Diego. Under the county's order, everyone must wear a mask in public places, especially indoors, and when you're within six feet of someone not in your household. But a beautiful start to the week, a sunny Monday afternoon. Weather forecaster Leah Pizzetti is joining us now to let us know if we have more in store. Good to see you, Leah. Yes, hello, Kimberly. So it's definitely a warm start to our week, but good news. We do have a little bit of relief heading our way. I know we all could use a little bit of a break from the heat right now. So warm start to the week, and then we are going to be cooling back down to average in just a couple days. That does mean we're going to start to see that overnight fog. That was more that morning marine layer kicking in a little bit more than what we've been seeing. Then at the end of the week, we do have a little bit of excitement with some winds and even shower chances heading our way. I know that's the word we like like to hear shower and rain. Uh, so temperatures right now you see it's warm. We're above average right now. We have those lower to mid 80s along the coast, 80 in San Diego right now, 90s as we move inland. Ramona at 93 right now, Escondido 92. Triple digits though are reserved for our desert communities right now. As far as our temperature change is concerned, you can see we're pretty close to where we were at this time yesterday. Just a degree or two warmer and heading into tomorrow it's going to be pretty similar to this yet again and then the relief comes so for this evening if you're heading out to the coast maybe we're going to be cooling down into the 60s by about 9 p.m and then we'll spend those overnight hours in the 60s tonight lows tonight across the border in those lower to mid 60s we'll see those in the early hours of tomorrow morning a little bit warmer for your monday evening as we head inland we'll hang on to those 80s through the evening, getting down into those 70s by about 8 p.m. And then same thing, we will eventually drop down into those 60s. But like I said, tomorrow really starting and then into this week is when we're going to start to see that marine layer kicking in a little bit more for our mornings. So for tomorrow, like I said, temperatures pretty close to what we felt today. So we are going to see, see a little bit of a cool down starting for tomorrow. So some 70s popping up along the coast with those 80s, still hanging on to those 90s inland. We can see 70s into those 80s for the mountains, but then check this out. In just a couple days, we're going to see a pretty significant cool down. So mid 80s for Tuesday, mid 70s by Thursday, and then we're going to hang out in those lower to mid 70s for the remainder of the week. Same thing for inland starting in those 90s. Look at that quick cool down into the 80s, eventually hitting into the 70s for our inland communities. Saturday, we do have very slight rain chances for our mountain and our deserts. We're also going to see some winds picking up Friday into to Saturday, you can see those temperatures really getting that nice cool down. So we're going from 10, 15 degrees above average back down to average. So it's going to be a nice week in just a couple days. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Skycam Views, sponsored by Carlsbad Solar. Retail credit card APRs have not changed despite the Fed slashing interest rates to near zero this year. Now, this is from a new report by creditcards.com. Store-only cards have the highest interest rate at nearly 30%. Now, that's the case for a few jewelers, discount tires, and big lots, which sells furniture and appliances. They're kind of preying in some cases on people who are really desperate to buy something but may not have the money for it. So it's really all about risk management. 
The survey found more than 43% of people have impulsively applied for a store card at checkout. That phenomenon may change this holiday season when much of the shopping is expected to be online. It might be less of an issue this year, although who knows, maybe the shoppers that are in store are going to be peddled these even more aggressively. So it's something to watch for. Store credit cards can be worth it if you pay your bills in full to avoid interest and you're loyal to a certain retailer. That's especially true for cards that offer 5% back on everything you buy. Amazon, Walmart, Target, and a few clothing stores offer those kinds of rewards. Now, if you're just signing up for an initial discount, don't waste it on a small purchase. Remember, a credit card is different from a free loyalty program. You might be getting into something that could hurt your credit score. Well, a startup is trying to crack the code on hit songs. Secret Chord Laboratories is based in Virginia, and musicians there have started studying the impact that music has on our brains. Now, they have a product named Doper, and it looks at the metrics like melody, harmony, and tone to predict which track will become a hit. Doper is always evolving because the mm -hmm. audience is always evolving. The audience hears new music every day and it changes their expectations of what they might like the next day. Secret Chord Laboratories has started working with big record labels to help them pick what songs to release. Now, rapid coronavirus tests like what the White House staff have been using are offering hope for being more proactive with testing what it's going to take to get enough of those tests out to the rest of the public. We want to go back to the breaking news of the president being released from Walter Reed Medical Center. Here is new video of the president as he arrives back at the White House. The president walks up just as you saw a second ago, those outside stairs, turns around here for a photo op with reporters that are down on the lawn. You saw him take his mask off. No one is around. He is alone on the balcony. He salutes the crew from Marine One as they leave, gives a thumbs up. He spends several minutes here allowing the world to see him back on the outside balcony of the White House before he will, in a couple of minutes, turn around and head toward those indoor uh, doors leading to the White House and continuing just to give the photo op here, adjusting his jacket, saluting, thumbs up, the president back at the White House. We will have continuing coverage of the president and his continuing battle with coronavirus as he is now under the watchful eye of Dr. Conley back at the White House. His last salute there. More later. Mail-in ballots will play a huge part in this year's election. The state says the ballots are on the way to every registered voter in California right now. ABC 10 News anchor Steve Atkinson is joining us now live from the Registrar of Voters office which will oversee the entire mail-in voting process in less than 30 days, Steve. It's going to be a big year, Kim, and most of the county already votes by mail anyway. We're now here inside the Registrar Voters Office. You have to wear a mask when you're in here, so that's why I'm doing so. We showed you a little bit earlier outside where people checking in. That's everything you touch from the, how you sign papers to uh, putting on gloves, wearing a mask. All that is done outside. When you come inside, these are the voting machines that you'll see if you want to vote here at the Registrar of Voters Office. You can place your vote then here down at the end of the hall. That's where you turn in your mail-in ballot. As you mentioned, the 2020 election starts today. You have 29 days worth of voting where you can either vote in person or look out for these mail-in ballots as well. Let's take a closer look at this because this is what it looks like on the inside. In fact, as we mentioned, three quarters of registered voters in San Diego County already voted by mail. Now every registered voter will receive one of these in the mail. No postage necessary and it's all because of the pandemic to keep everybody safe. After you mail in your ballot, it ends up here at the Registrar of Voters Office and this giant sorting machine verifies 44,000 ballots an hour. It is comparing the signature on the ballot to the one that you signed when you registered, all within tenths of a second. The people here just want to reassure you that no matter how you vote, it will be safe and it will be valid. That's my number one right now, is informing the entire public that there are changes in this upcoming election and they are all in response to the pandemic. All right, now, if you still want to vote in person, you can do that as well. They're going to be super polling locations. Instead of 1,600 of those in the years past, it's now going to be 235. 
all around the county and you have four days to vote starting Saturday, October the 31st, all the way up through election day on November the 3rd. It is all about voting safe this year, Kim. We'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Steve. A busy time for them indeed. A proposition on the November ballot would effectively eliminate the state's ban on affirmative action. That means public agencies and universities could make decisions based on promoting diversity. ABC 10 News reporter John Horn spoke to those on both sides of the issue. I was able to go to Stanford and prove myself and then go on to Georgetown and UCLA Law School on a full ride scholarship because I was given that initial first opportunity. Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez says she was one of the last to benefit from affirmative action in California. It allowed race, sex and ethnicity to be a factor in public employment, education and contracting decisions. California voters banned the practice via Prop 209 in 1996. California's ban on affirmative action programs has locked out small business owned by women and people of color from billions of dollars in contracting opportunities. It has hurt students of color applying to the, both the Cal State and the UC California University systems. And it's limited access to good wages and benefits for many thousands of women and people of color. Next month, California voters will decide whether to repeal that ban on affirmative action via Prop 16. Proponents say it would help level the playing field and reduce the gender wage gap. Opponents say Prop 16 allows discrimination and that there's already assistance available for people who need a boost. It's true that we need to do things to help people who haven't gotten the same opportunities, but that's true whether they are African-American, Latino, Asian, white, um, American Indian. Uh, we need to do things to help people that need a leg up. Uh, but let's not judge it on the basis of race. State universities, for instance, can consider low income or being the first in a family to attend college in admissions decision making. John Horn, ABC 10 News. Last week, our ABC 10 News Union Tribune scientific poll found that Proposition 16 was leading with 40 percent in favor, 26 percent opposed with the remainder undecided. Here are the important dates for voters over the next month. The deadline to register to vote is October 19th and your registration must be postmarked by that date. After that time, you can still vote conditionally. In-person voting begins October 31st at any one of the county's 235 polling places and election day is November 3rd. 10news.com is your source for complete election coverage. Just click on election 2020 at the top of the home page to find stories on the issues and the candidates so you can make the most informed decision this election. Let's go back now to weather forecaster Leah Pizzetti. She's tracking what will start off very warm but get a little more comfortable for so many people by the end of the week. Leah. Yeah, Kim, isn't that what we like to hear? A cool down is coming and hey, we get to say the R word too. Rain may be coming this week as well. So we do have to cool down first. Couple live looks outside right now. We do see some blue skies. I love El Cajon's blue skies right now, but with those blue skies definitely comes the heat. Current temperatures right now, we're seeing 80s along the coast. San Diego sitting at an even 80 degrees right now. There are 90s on the board. Poway at 93, Ramona 93 as well. So it's definitely a warm one right now. We are above average and that is going to continue into tomorrow, uh, but then a cool down will be heading our way. So next couple of hours for your Monday evening along the coast, we'll hang out in those lower 80s just a little bit longer and then we'll be in those 70s for our evening hours, eventually getting down to the 60s overnight tonight. Inland a little bit warmer. We're going to hang on to those 90s before cooling down into the 80s eventually right around 6 p.m. Same thing though, we are going to get down into the 60s for tonight. Heading into tomorrow, another warm above average day, but good news, this does seem to be the last day of those above average temperatures and then our cool down really is going to kick in. So along the coast, we are going to see some upper 70s, lower 80s, working our way inland to those upper 80s into the lower 90s. 
Palomar Mountain looking at 77 for tomorrow, Julian 81 degrees, and of course those triple digits in our desert communities for tomorrow. But then check this out, the next couple of days we're really going to see our cooling back to those seasonal norms. So really about 10 degrees from Tuesday into Thursday. Sunshine and clouds are going to be hit and miss this week as temperatures cool into those lower 70s by the end of the week. Saturday, we are tracking very slight rain chances. It looks like Northern California is going to get a little bit more love than us, but hey, we'll take any rain we can get, right? So for our inland communities, starting our week in the 90s and then getting down to those 80s, check that out, 70s in store for us next weekend. So definitely going to be a cooler weekend this upcoming weekend with those rain chances for Saturday. Mountain and desert communities, we're also going to see some winds really kicking in Friday and to Saturday. We'll still feel those for the coast and inland communities, but definitely gusty winds in the 20, 30 mile per hour range uh, for Friday and Saturday as those highs cool down during that same time period. Deserts actually will get to escape the triple digits, even getting down into the 80s eventually. So definitely we are looking forward to this cooling. We just have to get through the heat today, a little bit more heat tomorrow, and then something to look forward to. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Skycam Views, sponsored by Carlsbad Solar. The larger number of faster, cheaper COVID-19 tests is offering some hope. Researchers at Harvard and Brown say we need about 2 million tests a day for people who are symptomatic and their contacts to fight the spread of the virus. But then you also add in teachers, students, nursing home residents, and staff. The number's about 4.4 million. Now that's around four times the amount of people being tested per day, according to the COVID tracking project. So I think it's important to um, uh, make sure that we actually have a goalpost about where the country needs to head because the testing manufacturers need to know what that number looks like in order to make their own uh, business and manufacturing decisions about how to scale. Dr. Thomas Tsai says that we don't have enough capacity yet with the rapid antigen tests. He says letting the supply chain drive our guidelines for testing won't get us to where we need to be. Now, he says PCR tests that do take longer to come back are more accurate, but he says the antigen tests are promising because we just screen more often. Think about all the information that we've gleaned um, just from the, uh, uh, the exposure at the White House in terms of the, um, the patterns over the last several days. And you know, that kind of information, that kind of action uh, should not just be reserved for our politicians and our, uh, our athletes and celebrities. But that's what all Americans deserve in terms of uh, being able to have that information to fight the pandemic. He says testing by itself only gives you information and it's the actions like masking and distancing that really protect you. Now he says the federal government needs to make testing cheaper or even free for it to work. There's new groups of people that, you know, they were making it before, um, but they were right on that edge and are now struggling. Well, the challenge of affording the dentist in this pandemic isn't just impacting teeth, the other impacts that dentists are seeing. A window of opportunity for one of San Diego's iconic landmarks, the improvements to this 100-year-old treasure waiting on the other side of the pandemic. It's time for an ABC 10 News Voter Fast Fact. If you're voting in person this year and you voted in California before, you don't need to bring an ID. But if you're a first-time voter who didn't include your driver's license, your California ID, or your Social Security number on your registration form, you may have to show ID when you vote. If you don't have one, you'll have to cast a provisional ballot. For more information on this and more voter fast facts, go to 10news.com slash vote. Millions of Americans cannot afford to see a dentist right now. It was part of a health crisis long before COVID. And now with people losing their jobs and their insurance, things are only getting worse. Chris Conti takes a closer look at why doctors are so concerned and how some are stepping up to help. How are you today? If a smile changes everything, you can understand why Anna Eubanks cares so deeply about her teeth. Because that's part of my health, you know, that's part of your health. But affording a trip to the dentist is often as painful as a cavity. Both Anna and her husband are among the millions of Americans who do not have dental insurance. You do think about it. It's just you hope you never have to go there, have to, you know, that you never have to use it. There were great disparities that existed in the American healthcare system long before COVID hit. The last few months 
have only made things worse. You think you can put it off and it just catches up with you eventually. Dr. Rhonda Switzer Nadassi oversees Interfaith Dental in Nashville, Tennessee, a nonprofit made up of dentists who volunteer their time so that people like Anna Eubanks can get care at little or no cost, a need more